Hello and welcome back. I'm really excited about this video because I'll be discussing a topic that I'm really excited about. It's one of the, it's a recent idea in NLP and I'm really excited about it because it takes uh, the unit testing from software engineering and applies it to machine learning. And that enables us to do a few really cool things like being able to compare models better, being able to have a sense of quality assurance for models as we continue to train them. The idea is called behavioral testing. Let's look at a comparison, for example, of, of two models. So let's say we have model one and model two. And you can compare them by accuracy, and one is clearly has a higher accuracy than the other one. But then what if we look at them in a different way? What if we break down their capabilities, so to speak? One of them seems to, so the one on the right with a lower accuracy, uh, maybe does better in two capabilities, let's say. And maybe in our use case, we care more about these two than, than this third one. And in this scenario, the one on the right, despite having a lower accuracy or F1 or any sort of one number metric, that does not give us enough of a picture about how the model really behaves. Using our topic today, behavioral testing, we'll be able to get these scorecards that score models uh, on multiple uh, axes. So the paper we'll be discussing is Beyond Accuracy Behavioral Testing of NLP Models with Checklist uh, by Ribeiro, Wu, Augustrin, and Singh. This is, an, I think, an ACL. It was the one of the best uh, paper, I believe, in ACL of, of last year. And the basic idea is this. Let's say we have a model. Let's say we have a small robot. Uh, and we have an expected behavior. We expect that this, let's say, tiny robot will go uh, straight and then take a, a left. Uh, how do we assure the quality, so to speak, of the of the behavior that the model actually works, that the robot works how we expect it to do? We can borrow this idea of unit testing from software engineering and say, okay, let's have a test here to make sure that the model reaches its end destination. Let's have a test here to make sure that the model does not go beyond where it's supposed to, to take a left turn. Let's have another test here to make sure that it actually did turn left and not right. So you can just write these software tests to ensure that the behavior of your robot or your model is as you expect it. And you can run these tests numerous times uh, whenever you update it, whenever you uh, get a new model. And then you can group these tests into capabilities. And so in this case, we can say, okay, how well does this robot, let's say, go in straight lines? So we maybe ran 10 different tests for it going in straight lines. Uh, maybe it succeeded in nine of the 10. And so we have a score for this capability. How well does it do in turning and stopping and so on and so forth? So this is a miniature model example, but then let's look at how that can be done in NLP. And that's the, the, the topic of the paper, NLP models. So this is an example of a scorecard uh, directly taken from, from the paper. Uh, let's look at the first column on the left. So instead of turning and stopping, we have actual linguistic capabilities that models are expected to have. So how large their vocabulary is. And negation is the one that we're going to go into a little bit more. Uh, and then we'll focus on this, the second column first, the minimum functionality test. Don't worry about the other two for now. We'll get to them. So negation is important. And the main example of NLP models we'll talk about here, and the one they discuss in the paper, is sentiment analysis. So given a sentence, is the sentence saying something negative or something positive? Now, if you have a sentence like this, saying, I like this product, this is a positive sentiment. This is clear. But then... What if you add, I don't like this product? It's exactly identical except of, for one word that does negation. And if a sentiment analysis model does negation well or does not do it well, that affects its final sort of goal and its performance. And so let's see how we can test a negation using something like, like checklist. Basically, the, the unit test in the machine learning domain would be a small data set uh, that we carved out that we know uh, handles this behavior. So we have examples of inputs and we have a label associated with them. Uh, so here, for example, we want, I don't like this product. Uh, so this would be a negative sentiment uh, example. The food is not poor. So it's not bad. So it's either positive or neutral based on, you know, does this model have a neutral classification or, or is it just positive negative? 
And then you have something that's uh, the aircraft is not private. So the sentence itself was neutral, but then you negated the neutrality. It should still be neutrality, and so that should still be neutral. So how do we run the test? We feed the model the text, uh, and we have it uh, make predictions. Uh, and then if we have a model making these predictions, we just compare them with, with the labels. This one got three wrong and one correct. And so that's a 75% failure rate. And this is a functionality test that tells us how well a model does on negation. And then you're not limited to only having four. You should probably have 50 or 100 or a lot more examples to test uh, things. This is an example uh, from the paper. So here you can see MFTs are minimum functionality tests. These are the, the tests that look like small data sets. So this is, let's say, test number one. A negated negative should be positive or neutral. And here they have examples. So the food is not poor, should be positive or neutral. And then here they evaluate five different models. So I think this is a BERT, this is Roberta, both trained on sentiment analysis. And then these are commercial uh, models. So this is a sentiment analysis model from Microsoft, from Google, from AWS. Uh, and these are their failure rates. So under this test, there are, let's say, you know, 20 or 30 or 50 examples. And this is the failure rate. So the lower these numbers are, the better uh, this model would be. And then you can see tricky examples here, like negation of a negative at the end should be positive. So I thought the plane would be awful, but it wasn't. So all of the models, except for Roberta, find this a very difficult, so they fail the, the majority of times. So this is an interesting way of, of how you can uh, evaluate, let's say, models and you know, quality assure them as, as, as part of, let's say, CICD setup. The second type of test is an invariance test. And the example here is to say, if, let's f say we have a neutral or a positive sentence, like let's say turtles have shells. If we change the example in a way that does not change sentiment, so if we say feet in front instead of shells, the prediction of the model should not change. The class should not flip. Uh, so this is an, an example of type of tests. And the third type of example is called a directional expectation test. And it goes like this. Let's say we have a sentence, and then we predict it with the model, and the model says, okay, this is 50% positive. So it's between positive and negative. Let's say we add a negative portion to the end of the sentence. How would the model react? Would this score increase or would it decrease? So if it decreased, the test would pass. If the model says that this sentence, including the word awful, is actually more positive than this one, then that's a, a test failure. So the idea here is that these are kinds of tests that if we perturb or change the input in a way that we know should take the prediction in one direction, uh, that the model does not go the other way. It can go up maybe 10%, so this is up to you, but this is the, the default uh, that they work with, just to account for just the general behavior of, of, of models and, and how, how, how they do that. So it can go up a little bit, but not too much. Here is a scorecard in more detail, sort of comparing the various uh, capabilities. So here you have the part of speech and vocabulary, and then you have the minimum functionality test, what it looks like. And so this is short sentences with neutral adjectives and nouns. A lot of them get them correctly, except this part fails at these for some reason. Uh, and then here you have invariance tests. So replacing neutral words with other neutral words. So if you have this, let's say maybe this is a tweet. So should I be concerned when I'm about to fly? Originally it was, should I be concerned that I'm about to fly? And then that has a certain prediction. Then we, if we switch that to when, the prediction shouldn't change. And so there's a low failure rate across across the models. But then there's still something, they can probably update them to uh, have even lower failure rates. And then you have the directional uh, expectation test here. So if you add a positive phrase, make sure that sentiment, that the score uh, does not go down, that it's not indicated to be more negative, so to speak. Uh, and so they add, you are extraordinary. And so the, the score should actually go up and not go down.
Uh, and so this is this kind of test. So to recap, the first kind of test is the minimum functionality test. This looks like unit tests. They're small data sets that test specific capabilities. Then we have the invariance tests where we perturb, change the input in a way that we know should not affect the output and we measure if it does or does not. And the checklist uh, open source library that they provide with this paper includes templates that, that allow you to generate these kinds of perturbations for, for the input. And then we have the directional expectation test where the idea is if we make a perturbation to the input that is expected to shift the output one way or another, it's for us to, to make sure that it goes in the way that we're expecting and not the other way. So adding a negative word shouldn't make the prediction more positive. So this has been your intro to behavioral testing of NLP models uh, with checklists. I invite you to uh, read the paper, check out the uh, GitHub uh, library, there are links. Uh, down in the description. And then I can see, I can see several scenarios where, uh, so we talked about where this can be used. So we talked about comparing models. Uh, but I also am excited about having this just as, you know, running on. If you have a model in production, uh, it's good to make sure that, you know, the next update or the next time you retrain it, that one of the core capabilities that the model should be able to do has not degraded or that if it did degrade, that you know about it. It's just to, carry over these these practices uh, that make software more robust and software organizations more robust because I've, I've seen it I've seen companies that struggle because of not investing enough in in automated testing and in software tests and, and unit tests uh, so a lot of the engineers spend a lot of their times bug fixing and I've seen frustrated CEOs by the the, the speed of the development that a lot of these software practices are able to, to help an organization uh, that is growing. And the more we ad adopt that in machine learning and in machine learning practices, um, I think that that'll lead to better organizations and, and better practices and, and operations. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.